nothing worse than waiting around on settings at all. Are you ready, yeah. Jace? Yeah. They're both on? Yeah. Go on. <laughs> I just started. Hello, Bob Davis. You might know me as Bob the Rod Builder. Been working at Foster's for a hell of a lot of years now, 39 years. Probably rod building for 20, 25 of those. So, so how did it all start for you, really, Bob? The the rod building and basically working for Foster's. Um, let's start from the beginning. Many, many years ago, when Foster's first started, on. Um, in a place called Kings Road, our original shop. Richard Foster owned the shop. Um, my mum basically knew him when he worked at the off licence where she worked over the road. Knew he was a fisherman. Me and my mates used to go fishing together, so I basically went one day one Saturday and got a Saturday job there. Sort of, <laughs> the rest is history. So basically, it was a YTS boy then. So, YTS and the princely sum of, I think, £17.50 a week. Things haven't moved on much then really from no, there, I suppose. Yeah, £22.50 a week now, <laughs> so yeah, the good old YTS scheme. So I, I did that and sort of started as a maggot boy. In the original shop we sort of sold everything. It was a car spare shop, fishing tackle. So it was pet food, paraffin, fishing tackle. So I started off as cleaning the bait. And just generally tea maker and kept Richard fed with sandwiches. Well, much hasn't changed now. You're still tea maker for Foster's, really, aren't you? Still make a cup of tea now. And agony yeah. aunts. You make a good agony aunt for most of the lads in here, I suppose. Yeah, nothing experience, it all counts. So, yeah, <laughs> we sort of we started off, say, selling the fishing tackle, a bit of everything. Started with cleaning bait, serving behind the counters. So, back then, he used to go do a bit of fishing on the rivers. Uh, we started off fishing Sutton Park, uh, which is a local place down to us. And I still see a couple of the old boys, Ronnie and John, that we used to scrounge maggots off and hooks when we were 13, 14, 15. So that, that's still nice seeing those and having a chat. So where did the passion for rod building and the love for rod building really come from? Well, I, I think it first started because there was a lad, Scooby, who did a bit. There was another lad, Steve, did a bit. And I sort of watched them and, and, and learned and there was some floats called a Topper Haskins, which was a crow quill with a, a, a body on it, and they needed some whipping around the stem. So I thought, oh, I can, I'll try that, I can do it, and I, and I found I could do it. So they let me sort of loose, trying a bit of whipping, a bit of varnishing, because I suppose back then it's completely different to, to what it is now. Well, as yeah. I can see, you, you see you just looking then, you've got a couple of rods starting from basically the beginning of where it time begun, really, I suppose, isn't it? And then. Moving on, we've got another one from late, in later years. I suppose here's one we had earlier in true Blue Peter <laughs> tradition. I mean, one of the old boys who works in the shop now, Aid. He's quite old as well. He, isn't he? he is quite old. So. Very small. Very small. That's something. <laughs> and it's the old, still got the original Foster stickers on from Kings Road. Some old Northwestern blanks. The old Fuji green rings, which were which were all the rage back in the day, and a few of you. Modern anglers might be surprised how small the rings are and how many are on the rods now. So and, and sort of test curves and that obviously they've moved up in the times. What sort of test curve were they in the day? I suppose back 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 then the old Northwesterns, which was a two and three quarter pound test curve in the, the long range, that was classed as a long range rod. And that then. was sort of like compound tapers and all those kind of stuff, or that, was that they were probably more through action, or they were through action. You know, I don't suppose the tapers, compound tapers and all that sort of thing really kicked in till a, a few years later. Because when I first started doing it, it was still fiberglass, carbon fibre. Um, Northwestern were around, Sportex did a lot of rods. Still using Fuji products. I mean, they were still core candles on those with, with sliding reel fittings. Before, like most rods now have a screw fitting on. We were still using things where some people might remember that you put a leather grip on a snap lock reel seat. Um, as the varnish wise, again completely different. We used to have some seven foot stainless rod tubes. There was a gallon of yacht varnish went in, gallon of thinners, white spirit. Everything basically got dipped. So you'd get a nice smooth run off the varnish. You got a bit of sponge in the, the eye to get the excess varnish off and hang it up to dry and you'd get a nice smooth finish. Um, 
I see you doing something like that the other day with some old old corks that you built some old hardy corks which you was rebuilding for someone and you was basically just running it down into a bucket and you kept that process going for a good sort of 10 days or so just to get get the right finish on a rod which was probably 50 60 years old and to be honest it did come out and look pretty smart it did, it did look like the old original finish on them because there wasn't back in the day probably rotating machines the epoxy resins probably weren't available so you had to do what you had to do um, and I say the, the whippings haven't changed much and I say things like the rings have ring spacings that has all, all moved on now so these were probably some little light light tension rods probably a pound and three quarter but I suppose the tension got bigger the rods have got bigger now and everyone seems to want to cast a lot further don't they everything's I, probably just a natural progression that is so I say I, I enjoyed what I did I, I did I still enjoy what I do now so you was also a big part of a lot of people will know it as MAP now match angling products but in the time it was called Midlands Angling Products which was probably the baby of Richard Foster and Dave Harrell which was a big part of building all the rods in the old King Standing shop. Well, well Mike, Mike Robinson who's now director at Leader he actually started doing a lot of the rods for for MAP so and he's moved on a little bit now so. Well, I've had a few people who've worked here over the years Scott Jeans as well he was a brand manager at Preston as well who was part of building the rods of MAP wasn't he? He, he helped yeah we've had some, some good lads through the, the door so so yeah all, all, all good lads back in the day all sort of helping and, and did a bit of rod building. And you've got another one of your rods which I think was the Foster's Discovery which was built on sentry blanks if I remember rightly. Oh the, these were things that when it, when it moved on and we decided to do well, one of our own ranges we actually moved we extended the old Foster's shop because it simply became primarily just a fishing tackle shop. Um, car fishing again was kicking off and I remember the sort of old carp bait we used to have all the powders, flavours, it was all new to everybody and I think everybody used to go into dark corners and sniff the different powders because their own secret baits and stuff. Um, still cleaning a bit of maggots and stuff there because all the match lads were you know, buying a gallon of bronze, gallon of casters for their trips to the River Avon, River Seven. Um, and then we sort of moved, expanded the shop and had a predominantly separate carp, carp area. So we left the sort of match anglers in one corner and all the carp lads became a sort of another secret meeting place around the corner. And we started doing our own range of rods. Century developed the blank for us. Good old Foster's Discovery. Again. Well, they still go for, it's amazing really now, all them years on how old they are, how sort of people still looking for them, still use them, don't they, to this day, you, you rebuild quite a lot. There still are some old classic rods out there. The Discovery probably was a good rod, but some of the old classics, the uh, amorphoses, the armor lights, people still want them. They, they're yeah. great old rods. Uh, and I suppose you also had the old spot rod as well, which was built by Harrison, which won quite a lot of awards in its day, didn't it? Oh, when we first did that spot, again, spotting was sort of just coming into its element. It was it was new to a lot of people, so. And I, I always remember the first time we did it, we had a lad here called John Doody. We went down to, again, Sutton Park. We had a Coke bottle. It was literally a pound in weight. He stood on the jetty. I hid behind a tree and he launched this rod and it went about 20 foot in the air and about 10 foot in front of us. And we thought, that'll do for a spot rod. <laughs> that's, that's, how, that's how we developed it back in the day. Nothing too technical. Great product development. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it was. I, I could lie to you and tell you we cast it about 300 yards over 50 times, but it didn't. It was as simple as that. So, and then that, that was another good rod which we, we did with Harrison. Um, and I say we've, we've which, which it, nowadays you're still building on a lot of Harrison blanks, build on a few centuries, but Harrison, great company, top quality rods. I've, I've got to say that. But no, seriously, they are very, very good, good people to work with. UK built blanks, same with Century. A lot of people, sort of now, are coming back into the the UK built product. Really, they they're really supporting it and getting behind it, aren't they? In the UK. Well, that's the thing, because some people, that's what I say, there is still a call for custom rods, because people do want something different. I suppose back in the day, it was something different from everything being sprayed matte black when Richard did it from a can of Alfred spray paint, progressing through to the, the varnishing, the, you know, with the polyurethane varnish, 
to now matte blanks, epoxy resins and that sort of thing. The handles of you know, cork handles are still popular, albeit if you put a screw seat on there, or now some of the modern Alps Royal yeah. seats some people want with them. Um, again, the whipping hasn't changed much. The rings are sort of the same, same style as the rod ring, so again, that hasn't changed. Just, a lot, a lot of the weights bigger. have changed though, now, aren't they? A lot of people are using minima rings and the sort of titanium rings nowadays in the Ks and stuff like that. A lot of people are sort of using those to bring the weight down to make the rods a lot faster taper. Yeah, well, let's say the tapers on the rods became, when rods became stiffer in the butt section, a bit softer in the, in the tip, so you've got the, the best of both worlds for your power for casting and your softness. But when you look back now, there's a lot of people using two and three quarter pound test curve rods for, for barbel fishing now. Yeah. Now, back in the back again, I kept saying back in the day, 30 years ago, a heavy fiberglass rod with a, a big solid, what they used to call a donkey top, a splice top in it. Yeah. That was what a lot of people used. And again, a rod familiar to a lot of people was like the Shakespeare Strike or the Blue Match, which is probably available from Woolworths. Yeah. I actually, one of the first rods I did, I actually cut all mine up to make a heavy feeder rod out of it from a 13 foot match rod. It was just a heavy glass rod to do it, but now, no, it wouldn't be any good for growing beans up in your garden. It probably wouldn't, <laughs> but a lot of the two and three quarter pound Tesco rods that people use for their light carp fishing have progressed onto barbel yeah. rods. A lot of, you see a lot of the match rods from years ago, the Normarks now, people are still using them, but I'm finding I'm putting bigger rings on those, because again, they're following the carp angling. But the thing with Normark and Carbotex and even some things like boron matches, they were so evolved for their time, they, they were literally light years ahead wasn't they of rods even some of them to this day and age oh yes some, yes. some of the norm arcs were just phenomenal rods and still are and still probably sell for as much money on norm the second hand market as they they did when when you could buy them norm arcs class classic rods again i, I suppose when you look back at the, the presidents and things like that which were then the borons came out. I mean, some of the old glass rods with the Shakespeare Match Internationals. I mean, people still using Bruce and Walkers. The multi moduluses came out. Sundridge Kevin Ashurst, which was, a, was a, one of the, the top glass rods at the time. A lot of your older view, viewers watching this might remember the Shakespeare Alphas, which were a sort of orange see through blank. But then carbon, I suppose people did have their teething problems with carbon. But nowadays, the, the, the carbon product quality and resins. He's, he's second to none. So obviously a lot of this what we're talking about is sort of the custom built rods and the rods you've built for people. You don't just always build rods do you? You do a lot of rod repairs for people, you do a lot of pole repairs. You've made, well you've made some real weird things over the years and had some quite bizarre requests I suppose. A, a, a lot of it people want different colour whippings, you know some people have had some strange names on it but that, that's what they want of the choice. Yeah, like no, um, it's, a, it's a good little service that we offer as a shop. Oh, it's, it's very good because, say, somebody can come in, in instead of buying something off the peg, what, what they, you know, which which everybody can have, they can they can come and have a cast of the rods. Yeah, we take we take them down. The look, we tell them you tend to say bring the rod and reel that they're going to pair the rod up with. Well, sorry, not the rod. Bring the reel and the line that they're going to use. And then you take them down the local park lake, let them have a cast, and then sort of take three or four different rods. And try and get see if their casting style works for that rod, it, and it's all part of the process, really, isn't it? It, it works really well because then people, can, as you just said, people can get used to one rod. It might be a bit little stuff in the butt for somebody, something slightly softer with a, a bit more length might be yeah. might suit people, and and it really does work. Then we'll, we'll bring them back into the shop, usually give them a cup of tea. Then we'll get all the real seats out, show them that, show them some of the collars. We've had a lot of stuff made. That's where the tea boy mm. thing come from. You're still making the cups of tea. For still, people. still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and then we'll, we'll talk them through the rod rings, show them what's the, the, the flavour of the month with rod rings. Um, go through all the whipping colours. We can put a lot of different metallic colours in it now. You can rest um, the people like you've done to me, where you've done my rods in red, red, gold, and green, which you found quite funny. Ah, uh, if you pay the bill, we won't do that. <laughs> so, but no, in it, in it, the, the process is when, when you've built it, you've gone through it. The people are happy. It's a few week process to, to get them done because 101 things to do. 
and I really enjoy it when people get their rods and they are really over the moon with it. If, if somebody has got a little problem, hopefully we can get it sorted for them. I try yeah. to, don't you? Yeah. Nine times out of ten, everybody's, and then somebody will phone you back, thank you. That, that's a really nice, or put somebody a nice message on Facebook. Or they phone up and say, oh, thanks for my rod, I caught a nice new PB on it. Yeah, that, that's really, really good. So you just basically see what they want, and, you know, just show them everything, and, and it really does, does work. So then you know, so the, the new modern varnishes we can get a really really good finish on that nowadays. Yeah. So but yeah. obviously the, the which we'll go in later on is we'll basically show you some of the processes of how you build them, which makes the finish of the rod far better and a lot cleaner nowadays, I suppose, isn't it? It, it is. Yeah. I mean, getting the finish is, is you know you've got to have it's a good, key. Good, good finish full full stop. So yeah. You know, I, I'm still learning. Up to a couple of years ago, we started using a different paintbrush. To, to get the finish, which it, it's just silly little things like that. Yes. Just trying to get it finished, you know, printing the people's names on it, little things like flags, names, it, it all helps to, to personalise that run yeah, for your own yeah. custom. And again, with, with the colours, somebody might want a bit of green, somebody might want a bit of, little bit of red metallic in there, or keep it plain black. Yeah. So we, which we, a lot we of them are going for that sort of stealth look, aren't they, at the moment? That, that's all the, all the trend at the moment, yeah. I mean, the matte blanks are really, really good finishes on the blanks nowadays. So, a lot, when we had to dip everything all those years ago, the blanks are finished in a matte finish, so really you're only varnishing the blank, oh, well, sorry, varnishing the rod rings, and you do get a very, very good finish on them. So. Yeah, over the years, I suppose, you've been in here and seeing some the amount of people we've had come through this door, world champions. So, well, you've built quite a few rods for some very well respected, well known anglers in the fishing industry, really. Yeah, I've done a, done a few for a few various names and not, not name dropping, obviously. You know, <laughs> so no, you, yeah. you've done a lot of sort of prototype work for people as well, haven't you? Where we've yeah. they people have developed the blanks and they've got you to build and, and do all the builds to their request. Yep. And some of those rods you're actually buying on the market now as sort of factory build rods, but the whole process started in here with myself and yourself having chats with some of these manufacturers, haven't we? Yep, getting right. Well, so like with even like Sean Ashbury, you know, top respected angler, I've just changed the rings on his sections for, for the fishing, so still doing them for, for big names. They, they still come in and talk to me, so that isn't a bad thing. <laughs> But no, it, it's all little things like that we can do, like rod repairs, you say, pole repairs, even if somebody just breaks a, breaks a centre of that rod ring, we can get them back on the road at, at the time, it's the end of the world when that rod ring breaks, but yeah. quick phone call, we can reassure them, get them back on the road and they'll never even know. Sometimes you might just break the tip ring off, again, new tip ring, bit of whipping, the rod might be a centimetre short, but it's good to go again, so it's not the end of the world. Um, if you want your handles changed, there's a lot of the real seats now, the Alps and things, people want those, bring them in, we can Which talk you've, to you. You've had some custom parts made for some of the Alp seats and stuff like that, haven't you? You've had some of the different colours and different things, to, the end caps to go basically to match people's whippings with the reds and the blues, and just try and make it that bit different and a bit unique. It, it's all part of it again, just just to try and get that edge on people. Because I suppose everybody's striving to do something slightly different. Yeah. So if we can just offer something slightly different, it, it does sell rods. Because at the end of the day, people want something shiny and you know something different. So if it's got a bit of red in it, a bit of blue in it, it looks really good. So is, is there any sort of styles of rods you actually really enjoy building? You know what I mean? Like some, like say, going back to those cane rods we've seen. Or even look at AIDS rods, a rod that you would have built 27, 28 years ago that's still being used. You brought it, it's brought back in, and he wants you to rebuild it for you. Well, as I say, with that, we, we can, I'll, I'll pick that a rod up again, we'll bring that back to life. That'll be, we'll put that on the, on the lathe, just sand the cork off, clean all that off. We can strip all the old varnish off, clean all the varnish out of the rings. Hopefully preserve the sticker, keep his name on it. Just, for a need, bit of, just needs a bit of TLC, I suppose, doesn't it? Yeah, keep it a bit original. Sometimes with a lot of the older rods, the spigots will start to wear, but all that needs is a little axle. Just take a thou off the end of it. That will be fitting again, and we can do the original varnish or do a bit of the modern varnish on it, and they'll last him for a, a good few years again. So we can get those back on the road. The cane rods again, restored them, they did look really took a it was a bit of a 
Pain backside to get the varnish right. A few swear words early in the morning. But when the custom when Keith picked him up, he was over the moon because it was a really, really good finish. I suppose I enjoy it when people come in, they've spent their hard earned money. They sometimes are thinking, what am I going to get? Yeah, so some of the rods, I suppose, you see and think, really, why am I rebuilding this? It's, the, the build's going to cost more than the rod's worth, but I suppose a lot of it's sentimental value to people and they feel that it needs building. You, you do get that, people have sent, you know, as you say, they might have caught the biggest them. fish, it was their father's, or. Yeah. But you can restore that and, and get it back on the road. It, it's really good seeing their faces and happy. Then you might see them six weeks later and they go, yeah. Bob, just had a great big fish on that, thank you. And that's yeah. that just gives you a little warm feeling because you know you've done something well for somebody. Yeah. You know, you might help them out just quickly. They're going holiday, they've got their rod out, help me, rod ring's gone. You, you'll get it done for them and try and help them out. And again, just two little things like that, just to, you know, thank you, it means the world to you. Yeah, yeah. So. so I suppose if you wasn't real building rods, is, is there any sort of job or any, what, what could you see yourself doing if you wasn't building rods? I, I think I'd actually probably be your probation officer because I've known you that long to keeping you on the straight and narrow Tom. <laughs> um, I, I don't honestly know because I sort of, I, I love the job I do, so I've never ever thought about doing anything else. So I, I, I don't yeah, honestly I don't, I don't, I suppose you, know, if that's all you've done for um, such a long time it's probably hard to think of anything else yeah, to so, do. So if I can see a few more years out, get a bit of greyer, so hopefully hang on to it and you know, see the last good few years out at Foster's now. So what what do you actually do in your spare time? Is there any sort of hobbies you got? Do you still do much do you still do any fishing? I, I, I do actually like going floater fishing, but I just like walking around with a floating crust. Well, we, um, we, I say that we went last year, didn't we? And we spent more time walking around and looking at the fish than we actually did fishing. Yeah, I suppose we did, but uh, <laughs> setting the worlds to rights, just having a. But that, that's half the battle. If you can sit and go and have a laugh, you know, sitting in the. I'd like to save me mates, but he ain't me mates. I can promise you that. Uh, we've been forced to sit here together to film this. So, um, but I say no. I enjoy playing a bit of golf. So, but if I'm on a golf course and I see a pool, I'm like, oh. There's a pool with some thingy if I'm playing by the side of the river I want to stop and look so I enjoy a bit of walking but again I love walking on canals because I suppose it's the association with fishing and you, you're always stopping and saying oh plus the fact you can find a pub on a canal so there is the added bonus of that. No, but, but thanks very much for doing this Bob I'm sure there'll be a lot of people who you may have built rods for or you've made happy that will really enjoy sort of watching this. Well, let's just say when we when we went on Facebook a few months ago, and it sort of there was a lot of people you know we hadn't seen a lot of people you know, and it was just there was a lot of abusive uh, comment, but just it was just mo funny mostly because, based around the football team. It was, it, was, it was you know rubbish football team, and we'll do anything for beer, but it proves you get on with people, proves you like people. It, it's nice to have a good word off people as opposed to you know what they think I'm a miserable son really who sits in here. So yeah. No, nice one. Cheers, Bob. Thank you. Thank you.